Hello, my name is Myrna Miroff, and I'm with the South Florida Chamber Ensemble. Today's program is called Fairy Tales Retold. We'll be listening to two stories from different parts of the world that are similar. And our stories for today are Isin Boshi and Tom Thumb. There are actually dozens of stories that have that same theme of a small boy who never grows, including Thumbelina from France and Garbancito from Spain. So our stories, Tom Thumb and Isin Boshi, come from two different parts of the world. Isin Boshi coming from Japan, and Isin Boshi meaning inch high samurai, and Tom Thumb, which comes from England. Isin Boshi is probably the earliest version of the story, and Tom Thumb the second. The Tom Thumb story was written in 1621, but it was based on the times of King Arthur. So. Here I am dressed in my best Guinevere Renaissance outfit. So let's start with Tom Thumb. During the days of King Arthur, old Thomas of the Mountain, a plowman and a member of the King's Council, wanted nothing more than a son, even if he was no bigger than his thumb. So he sent his wife to Merlin's castle to ask Merlin's help in getting them a son. Once upon a time, there lived an old couple. Having no children but desiring one very much, they went to the Red Pagoda with a three-paneled brown door and prayed, Please, please let us have a child, no matter how small. We return to Tom Thumb. Tom's wife gave birth to a child the size of a thumb. The queen of the fairies provided the child with an oak leaf hat, a shirt of cobweb, a doublet of thistledown, stockings of apple rind, and shoes of mouse skin. And thereafter he was known as Tom Thumb, after his father and his size. He was so small that he often got into a lot of trouble. At Christmas, his mother made puddings, but Tom fell into the batter and was boiled into one of them. When a tinker came begging, Tom's mother inadvertently gave him the pudding containing her son. The tinker sneezed and Tom shouted out, bless you, scaring the tinker into dropping the pudding. Tom ate himself free and returned home to tell his mother and father of his adventure.
Eventually they had a son, but small indeed was the child, no larger than a grown man's fingertip. The couple raised the child tenderly, and though he became a bright and well-respected young man, he grew not an inch. As a result, he became known as Isin Boshi, Isin meaning one inch and Boshi meaning boy. He told his parents he wanted to seek his fortune in the city. So they sent him off with a sword made of a sewing needle, a sheath made of straw, a boat made from a rice bowl with chopsticks for the oars. He put on his black samurai clothes and his black samurai helmet with yellow horns, set his boat in the water and paddled for days until he reached the town. Returning to Tom Thumb, one day Tiny Tom was out with his father. He was playing with a scarecrow when a raven picked him up and flew him across the land. The raven dropped Tom off at a castle of a giant. The cruel giant swallowed the tiny boy like a pill. Tom thrashed about so much inside the giant's stomach that the giant vomited him out. Boshi walked to the prince's mansion. At the gate he announced himself, but he was so tiny the guard didn't even hear him. Finally he was taken to the prince, who hired him on the spot. Everyone came to love the intelligent, charming Isin Boshi, but none more than the prince's daughter. He became her personal attendant, following her around with a Japanese flag that is a white rectangle with a red circle in the middle.
back to Tom Thumb. There he was eaten once more by a fish, which is caught for King Arthur's supper. The cook is astonished to see the little man emerge from the fish. Tom then becomes King Arthur's dwarf. One afternoon, the princess went to Kayumizu Temple. Suddenly, an oni, a Japanese ogre, jumped onto the road. Isenboshi threw himself upon the attacker, but the oni swallowed him up in one gulp. In retort, Boshi stabbed at the insides of the oni's stomach. The oni threw him up, defeated the yellow oni with the red hair, fled, dropping his magic bonsho. Back to Tom Thumb again. Tom becomes a favorite at King Arthur's royal court, especially among the ladies. There's revelry. Tom joins the jousting and dances in the palm of a maid of honor's hand. He goes home briefly to see his parents, taking some money from the treasury with the king's permission, and then returns to court. The queen of the fairies finds him asleep on a rose and gives him a gift of a magic tabor drum. The princess picked up the magic bond show and said, If you ring this, anything you ask for will be yours. Isenboshi replied, I want neither money nor fish. All I want is to become full-sized. The princess rang the yellow bond show 
with the brown handle. And now for the end of Tom Thumb. Tom visits King Twaddle of the Pygmies. He takes a ride in his walnut shell coach and meets Gargantua. Each boasts of his many powers. When Gargantua threatens to harm him, Tom uses his magic drum to get home to safety. King Arthur listens to the story with amazement. And that's the end of Tom Thumb. In an instant, Isanboshi became a full-grown, handsome warrior. The princess, wearing a white kimono with purple flowers, smiled at him. He married the princess, and they lived happily ever after.
Before we compare our two stories, I wanted to introduce you to the tabor. This is a drum that's traditionally used in English music. There's a little string to hang it on you so that you can play it from both sides. And here is what it sounds like. I wanted an opportunity to introduce you to a traditional Japanese instrument. This is the Bonsho. It's a temple bell that you will typically find inside of a Japanese temple known as a pagoda. What you do is think about a wish and then ring the bell and it sends your wish to the spirits. So everyone out there, think very hard about what you really, really want. Keep that thought inside your head. Keep thinking about it and I'm gonna ring the bell to send your wish to the spirits. So now let's compare our stories side by side. In our first panel, in Isenboshi, the parents go to the shrine to pray for a child no matter how small. In Tom Thumb, Tom sends his wife to Merlin's castle to get the assistance of the wizard in having a child, no matter how small. So in both, in both cases, they're going to buildings. We go to a pagoda in one, we go to a castle in the other, and magic is involved. In our second panel, we see the emergence of the two thumb-sized characters. So in Isenboshi, the child is born and is given objects to take with him as he goes on his journey. Those are a sword made of a sewing needle, a sheath made of straw, a boat made from a rice bowl with a chopstick for an oar. In the case of Tom Thumb, after the mother gives birth to the child, the queen of fairies provides the child with clothing, an oak leaf hat, a shirt of cobweb, a doublet of thistle down, stockings of apple rind, and shoes of a mouse's skin. In our third panel is where we're going to see a little bit of deviation. So in Isenboshi, this is where he meets the prince. But Tom Thumb doesn't meet King Arthur until the fourth panel. What happens with Tom is he meets the giant, which doesn't happen in Isenboshi until the fourth panel. So these two panels are a little bit reversed in the two stories. but. The panels are the same. So Isenboshi goes to the prince's mansion and becomes a favorite of everyone there. And when Tom Thumb meets King Arthur, he becomes a favorite of everyone there and becomes King Arthur's dwarf. In the scenes with the giant, or the oni in the case of our Isenboshi, the oni or the giant swallows up our thumb-sized character and eventually spits them out. Our fifth panel contains magic once more, but in this case, it's tied to a musical instrument. So in Isenboshi, the princess rings the magic bell, the Bon Show. But in the case of Tom Thumb, the queen of fairies once again brings him a gift of a magic tabor. And then the ends of our stories are slightly different. This is the biggest deviation in the two stories. In Isenboshi, that magic Bon Show allows him to become full-sized. But in Tom Thumb, he just becomes, again, the favorite of the king, loved by all, but retains his thumb size. I hope you enjoyed Fairy Tales Retold, Tom Thumb and Isenboshi. Have a wonderful day.